attention is Benaiah refused to let fear keep him from his God-given opportunity. You see, God's odds are different. When that boy brought five loaves and two fish to feed 5,000 to Jesus, five plus two equals seven. That means that he was 4,900 and 93 meals short, any way you look at it. But God's odds in God's economy says that 5 plus 2 equals 5,000 with a remainder of 12 because they picked up 12 baskets full after he fed them all. What am I saying to you? I'm saying that when God is in the equation, your nothingness plus God's almightiness equals more than enough. And if you'll go in his name, you can defeat that fear. And God will bless you in astonishing ways. I wish somebody would shake a spirit of fear off of you and quit looking at that thing and backing up and saying, I can do all things through Christ who is strengthening me. Praise God. We need to praise him one more time. I feel fear melting in the presence of God. Don't let your dream be buried in a graveyard because of fear. My greatest moments, my greatest moments in life doubled as my scariest moments. That's the truth. Why do people go to theme parks and ride roller coasters? Why do they get their stomach scared into their throat and pay for it? <laughs> Why? Because our greatest moments are our scariest moments. I'll tell you something else. Scary experiences make the best stories. Somebody asked me the other day, well, how was your trip, your anniversary trip with your wife to Hawaii? I said, oh, it was incredible. It was beautiful. The, uh, the waves were huge and the flowers were beautiful. And they were like, yawn, yawn. And then I said, yeah, and we went shark diving. <laughs> what? <laughs> the scariest experiences make the greatest stories. Can you, can you imagine Benaiah telling bedtime stories? <laughs> can you see his kids and grandkids? Tell us again, Grandpa. Tell us again. It was a snowy day. I want to ask you a question. Are you living your life in a way that is worthy of telling stories of? Are there, is there any risk or any chances that you're taking that would make a good story? So I found out that I could go to Hawaii and lay out in the sun or I could go and get a good story. And this is actual footage of me and Sharice and our friends, the Tebos, as we got into the water. This is real footage. I'll show you where I am. That's me over to the left. My feet are up on the glass, and Sharice is trying to get around me, and I refuse to let her get near me. That's me in the white shorts right there. I, I'm feeling great danger at this point. See Cherise in the middle, she's just struggling, and I'm praying for her. I really am. Amen. Praise God. That's the end of that. Cut it. <laughs> but the scariest, the scariest experiences make the greatest stories. What kind of stories is anybody going to ever tell about you if you don't ever try something courageous? It takes courage to chase a God-sized dream. A God-sized dream will scare the daylights out of you. But if God tells you to do it, do it, and he'll bless you. The alternative to fear is boredom. If you don't take advantage of God-given opportunities because you're too scared to try, then at some point you're going to be sentenced to a life of boredom. No adversity equals no opportunity. No guts equals no glory. Well, they, they count these teenagers here now. Right, let me talk to you. Sooner or later, God's going to give you an opportunity. And if you let a spirit of fear come on you and say, Well, I'm just shy and I just can't. I don't know. I better not try. Might, I might look foolish. They might talk about me. I might fail. What if I fail? Don't even think like that. 
That's not God. That's not, a, that's not God's word to you. He says, I want a fearless people. That's why he said to Joshua four times in Joshua 1, after Moses had died, he knew he had to get fear out of him or he would not discover his destiny. And he said, fear not, be of good courage. Fear not, be said it four times in one chapter. Why? Because human nature will let fear overcome you, paralyze you, neutralize you, and put your dream in a grave. The astronauts experience something called zero gravity when they get into outer space. But if they stay there long enough and they come back into earth because they've not had any resistance, the bone density and the muscle mass disintegrates in their bodies and they have medical complications. Why? Because resistance makes us stronger. I like Benaiah because he said, I could walk away, I could play it safe, but you know what? I think even though I'm going to encounter some resistance when I go in this pit, the battle is worth it and all resistance does is makes you strong. And some of you, your whole life exists on I only want the elimination of fear. I don't want any fear. I don't want any fear. At some point, you need a little fear. Normal is overrated. Get a little weird. I'm almost through. But when you follow God, He'll lead you sometimes into strange places and strange seasons and change and uncertainty. You have to learn to abandon the security if you're going to walk with God sometimes and chase the uncertainty. That's what, jo uh, that's what Jonathan did when he turned to his armor bearer and he was facing the Philistines and he makes this powerful statement. He's, watch him chase uncertainty. He said, come on, follow me. It may be the Lord will help us fight them. That's what Abraham did when he went out not knowing where he was going. What was he doing? He was abandoning the secure and he was moving into a God-given opportunity. He didn't allow his fear to paralyze him and to hold him, but he said, there's something that I'm supposed to do and this is the opportunity and here I go. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm walking by faith, don't even know where I'm going and God will tell me when I get there. There's something called in the scientific community the butterfly effect. This is a scientific term. You can look it up. The butterfly effect was discovered in 1960 by an MIT researcher who said the flapping of butterfly wings, and he proved it, could alter wind currents thousands of miles away drastically. That looked like that wouldn't get anything done. But he proved that small choices and changes over time can have huge consequences. Think about that. Benaiah is sitting in the palace under Solomon as the captain of the host of Israel. And how did he get there? It could all be traced back to one risk that he took. And that butterfly wing flap had ramifications that years later would work him up the ladder, get him an interview with the king, make him the bodyguard, and ultimately put him over all the armies of Israel. And little things, little acts of obedience, just doing it and feeling the fear and saying it could go wrong, but here I go. They can have huge... At some point, when you obey God in those God-given opportunities, you push the first domino over. Turn to somebody and say, push the first domino over. And everything's connected. Is anybody hearing me? Everything's connected. When I said yes, I'll preach. And when I walked feeble kneed scared, afraid into that little pill pit in eastern North Carolina, shaking and preaching. I remember when I preached for, 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 for uh, forgetting the things that are behind, reaching for that which is before. I pressed for the mark of the high call. I didn't know that I was just a little butterfly 